the adoption of AI is imminent. It's just, it's going to be five years or 10 years or 15 years, or even 50 years, whatever it is, it's going to transform life as we know it. And it will never, ever be the same again. I've been thinking a lot about this and my previous grandparents and great grandparents and great, great grandparents. And, you know, I tell, I have two young boys, they're five and six years old. And I think about what their life is going to be like. And I teach them about their grandpas and their great grandpas that come from America and were cowboys and farmers and stuff. And, and I look at their life now. And it's going to be so drastically different than anything that's happened over the last 2,000 or 100,000 years for humanity, I believe. And that's why I'm so excited to work with you on Sarka, because if you don't train these correctly, then I don't see any reason that they would want to keep us around. <laughs> and I think it's really important to do it properly. And this is the most important thing, in my opinion. And like you said, I guess AGI trained properly can actually engineer that in because it doesn't have this narrow goal of a single KPI. It can say, well, wait a second, is this really the right thing to do? Is this what we should be doing? That's really important. And the right training is the only chance we have. And when I look at the rest of the market now, I don't see any of those motivations because a corporation by definition is going to be motivated by money or motivated at, by first mover advantage. We've already seen that. And a government, you know, by other metrics of being first, of beating the other one, of warfare on their mind. And it's, it's a bit terrifying to see that. Um, you're the only project that even is thinking in, in any way, shape or form about these, not to mention the engineering, not to mention the cognition, not to mention the expertise. So that's why it's really important uh, for people to understand that. Can we talk about the reaction to ChatGPT? Because it's been interesting. And I also know you've had some conversations with people about whether, you know, there should be a pause or not be a pause. But there was a letter, I think, drafted and signed apparently by a thousand people in, in the AI community that asked for a six month pause, I think, on research. I'm curious what you thought of that and then some of the conversations you had around that. It's it's reminded me a little bit of Brexit, actually. Do you remember Brexit in I the do. UK? We were all split. There was this like giant split in society, and and the pause, pause not pause, is um, is is a hotly debated topic in the artificial intelligence community. I'm vehemently against pausing with advanced AI research. To pause advanced AI research is like saying let's pause progress. Let's stop. Let's 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 regress as humanity as a species. It could have, were it to happen, it could have lots of unforeseen consequences, such as nation states who don't pause, absolutely winning the AI race just for a start. But to me, to come back to my point about AGI ending inequality and ending world hunger. These technologies are our absolutely, they're the only hope I see. If anyone else can see any other hope, show me because I just don't see it. The SDG for ending world hunger by 2030 is slipping backwards. We're not making sufficient progress in our lifetime whilst children are dying of hunger. It's, it's not acceptable as as an intelligent species for us. And I think it's all very well for wealthy white people whose children are safe, who everybody has food on their table, to take a philosophical and, and um, made up stance that we should pause in our development of technologies. I'd say, what about the what about the children who are dying today? What about the children who don't have any books in their language? We're, we're working, we're also working on speech to speech machine translation for low resource languages in Africa, which we feel really is, ha, has the potential to dramatically uplift the continent, dramatically uplift the economy and the perspectives, the, the possibilities and the potential of every human being on, on the continent. I think it's I think it's a it's a it's a blinkered a blinkered proposal that 
does not have all of humanity's interests at heart. I'm not sure exactly what the interests are. I'm sure they're probably well-intentioned. However, pausing progress on the most advanced technologies is just a ludicrous idea. The West could get slammed in the AI race and children will continue to die of hunger without, without us doing the best we can as a species to get in and prevent and, and stop that. Then there's the point to six months to allow regulators to do their do their work and set up regulations. And again, you know, I've come from a highly regulated financial services industry and I work very closely. I had the pleasure of working with some of the great regulators around the world in, in financial services and I have great respect and, and friendships in the regulators. And what I can absolutely say is regulators move extremely slowly. What on earth does anybody think a regulator would do in six months? There's a giant education um, uh, journey to go on for regulators. There are so many massive factors to consider in regulation of artificial intelligence. How on earth would we get a global regulation accepted in the first place? How would you define it, design it? Where would you draw the line between complex, not complex? Uh, so, so on many fronts, this proposal doesn't make sense to me at all, and it doesn't make sense to us at Singularity Net. What does make sense is developing common ethical standards for artificial intelligence. What does make sense is a decentralized approach to artificial intelligence, where a large community with diverse views from all across the planet people from, with, 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 from, from LGBT communities, people from different races, people different ages, people different levels of ability, where, where the whole of humanity has an input in a decentralized manner into the development of these tools so that they reflect the greatest ethics values of, of humanity as we know it today, and then can grow and move forward with humanity as we continue to grow and evolve and co-evolve with our new AGI buddies. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReel.tv forward slash Jim Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReel.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions 
American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.